okay hello you should be uh, able to see the recording now yeah, yeah the audio is coming <coughs> I hope you can see my cursor and my screen okay so this is the CS571 lecture which we missed uh, earlier this week so I will record the lecture and I will upload it and I hope you will get time to see it because uh, the lab assignment number two is based on this lecture uh, before we uh, <coughs> Before we get into the lecture itself, I wanted to share the uh, revised course evaluation plan. I had mentioned it in the. Uh, uh, I had mentioned this on Monday before the lecture got stopped be because of the network issue. Uh, so anyway, so now I'm giving uh, a small percentage of marks for the lab, which amounts to 10 percent. And uh, the three uh, exams, quiz 1, quiz 2 and NSEM are of 20% each and 30% uh, marks is for the project. Fine, so project will start around uh, the 10th week and uh, uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Fine. So that is the revised evaluation plan. I hope you are fine with it. I will update it on the Moodle uh, web page as well. Fine, so now we can. <coughs> okay, so uh, on to the lecture itself. Uh, what happened? I, did I do anything here? No. This is fine. Okay. Uh, recording is going on. Okay, sure. So uh, we will see data structures in this lecture. Uh, so Python, since we are using Python for this part of the course, Python has a lot of inbuilt data structures uh, which helps you uh, provide, I mean to write uh, programs quickly and uh, to a large extent uh, efficiently. Okay. So many common data structures are uh, there in Python which will be useful for you in day-to-day uh, -day programming tasks. Uh, before we uh, do that, I just want to talk about the string example which we uh, stopped with in the first lecture. So uh, we said that strings are Im immutable in Python, right? Uh, okay, what is here? Strings are uh, immutable in Python and uh, so that means once a string is defined, you cannot change it. <coughs> So for example, when we have a string greeting, which has got the string hello world, this is the variable hello world, and this is the string which is stored. So the greeting is the so the variable name is a reference to the string. So this is how the string was the uh, in the main memory of the computer. Uh, uh, memory is allocated and the string is stored there. So it's, a, it's basically a string constant. And greeting is a reference to that string. Now, when you change uh, the first character to J, it will give you an error because the string is not mutable. So that means once you declare a string, a string cannot be changed. But what you can do is you can create a new string where I have uh, used J in the first place followed by the remaining parts of the original string and I put it back into greeting. And then when I print greeting, I will get I will get jello world. So, uh, in essence, what is happening is this: this the second greeting is a new string, a completely new string is created. The other, the original string which you had created, is still there. Okay, so this string, once it is defined, it cannot be changed. So this string will be there, and now greeting will no longer reference this one. It will point. It will now reference this one. So it's so it's like a pointer. Okay, so this is now greeting becomes a pointer to the new string. <coughs> so this string is actually eating up memory space. So eventually Python has a garbage uh, cleaning me mechanism by which it will uh, uh, un unreferenced uh, memory locations like this will eventually get uh, removed by the garbage collector. Uh, once in a while, it gets just handled by Python itself or by the operating system. So this is how it is. So this is. Remember this picture. This picture has to be clear in your mind. Okay. 
so this is the uh, so so this is the way of uh, updating the reference which contains a particular string <coughs> now uh, this also we mentioned in the previous lecture uh, strings we said are objects and objects have built in methods so we will see more about objects when we cover object oriented programming but uh, for the time being uh, just understand that uh, an object is an abstraction of some real world uh, concept and it provides uh, methods that is functions which will work on the objects so we'll see that later so uh, so so the st the string itself comes with uh, lots of built in methods uh, so if fruit is a string so just like how you had the greeting here right so fruit is a variable which references a string you can access the object by and the the methods in the object by using this dot notation so fruit dot capitalize is how you call a particular method in in this particular object so this will capitalize uh, banana the first character is capitalized how do you know that i know that because of uh, uh, here I have to go to the documentation to understand what it is so in string uh, if this is the documentation for string and see there is a capitalize method here so these are the string methods so capitalize return a copy of the string with its first character capitalize and the rest lower case so this is what this capitalize method does so essentially the returned string is a new string because the original fruit string cannot be modified because it is a non mutable object and there are other methods so end with ends with s means it gives you either a true or false so just note how uh, python has boolean types it has uh, it is capital t r u e the the t is capital and f uh, false is f is capital a l s e is like this so please remember this is how python uh, has binary uh, binary uh, variables binary constants true or false so you can go through the documentation here it gives you uh, the documentation of all the standard types in python because it is probably it is not possible for you to keep everything in your head because keep things keep changing python uh, is a language which keeps evolving and uh, you should always refer to the documentation to know what is the uh, uh, most latest uh, version this is based on what what is it that you have installed on your computer uh, the current version of python i think is 3.9 so if you have more or less updated your python version you will be having that or you might even have the previous version fine so uh, we will also see some more examples of some other data types so x here is a <coughs> is a string some some examples of uh, built in methods for string find is a method uh, uh, find can be used to find out the location of a particular substring uh, you can see the documentation for wha all what this means so find which find also accepts an optional argument which allows you to start the a uh, search from this index uh then these are some more examples 3.4a is a string here is alpha numeric is going to give you false z dot alpha is is alpha is going to give you false because it is not alpha numeric the point is there <coughs> okay is alpha and is alpha numeric are two different things there are two two different functions please you, you, you have to refer to the documentation to see the functions uh here for example w is 34a so w dot else is a al num that is alpha numeric gives you true because it is either a character or a number uh a useful function is strip so strip removes uh, trailing and uh, uh, uh trailing and leading spaces will be removed by strip and there is also else strip uh now another type now this is name is rahul nair now there is a function called uh, partition which partitions 
the string based on some uh, character which you specify. You can give a delimiter by which the uh, string is partitioned and the parts based on that delimiter are put into what is known as a tuple. This name parts is uh, another type of object, another type of data uh, structure in Python called a tuple. So a tuple is a, like an ordered collection. Okay, We'll see more on tuples in, in, in a bit and so if I print name parts I will get Rahul uh, the delimiter and uh, Nair and uh, it can be used like an array in some sense because uh, you can use the, the length function uh, on this tuple type it tells you that the length is 3 because there are 3 parts and you can access each element by the index notation similar to how you do it in with a, with a list or with an array so name part 0 will be Rahul, name part uh, 2 will be Nair so this is the tuple type, we will be seeing more on tuples soon Okay, so that was that. Uh, hello, hello, is the recording kind? Okay. So, uh, oh, sorry, what happened here? Okay. Yeah, so uh, we will continue. <coughs> now, uh, uh, arrays are commonly used data structures, which I think most of you are familiar with. And generally, arrays are called uh, lists in Python. Uh, so uh, they are uh, lists are also objects, and they also support a lot of uh, lot of methods, and uh, they are all derived from uh, a, a, a super class, and uh, and also there are uh, several built-in functions which act on uh, a wide variety of objects, uh, including list. For example, length is a method which we've been using earlier also, which gives you the length of a list or length of a tuple or a dictionary or whatever it is. <coughs> and uh, you have seek you you have already seen the index notation how you can access uh, various elements of the list s of minus one uh, gives you the last element of the list because the uh, indices are, are circular uh, one difference from strings are that lists are uh, mutable objects okay so strings are not mutable whereas list is mutable that means the list can be changed so once I create a list I can change one particular uh, index or I, I, I can change the value stored, uh, stored at any particular index so here uh, the first character which is actually because the array indexing starts from 0 this is the second uh, element of the list that now is changed so 6 has now become 7 so contrast this with strings you have to based on what is it that you require you might have to use a non-mutable type or sometimes you might have to use a mutable type because because the difference in both of them is uh, very relevant based on the context where you want to apply them so please be careful about it uh, lists like I said are objects and append is a commonly used method which keeps adding to the end so if you add uh, if you append 11 here to this list another 11 gets appended to the end of the list so this we say is the start of the list and this is the end of the list uh, count method tells you how many times a particular element appears there are other uh, methods I will not get into details of the methods you can go through the documentation uh, as and when you want and uh, understand the various methods okay insert reverse there are various methods are there sort sort is a method which sorts the list in place so list uh, it's sorting uh, sorting it in p some particular order in the ascending order here and the sorting happens inside memory the same list because the list is a mut mutable objects uh, the same list the, the the exactly the same memory location is changed with the new order of, of elements <coughs> let's see a little bit on tuples again we saw what is a tuple uh, so, so a tuple is a data structure which is basically an ordered collection of values for example one example of a commonly used tuple is the XYZ coordinates which you use in 3D space 
So uh, these are some examples of tuples. Tuples can have uh, multiple types of uh, objects which in its contents. So here is a tuple which contains three uh, uh, numbers, whereas here is the tuple which contains two numbers and a string. And you can access them just by using the index notation as like in lists and strings. And you can also use the slicing operator. The important difference is tu tuples are immutable. Once you create a tuple, just like a string, you cannot modify the contents of the tuple. So that is the feature of the tuple data type. And uh, tuples, you know, is, is a, it's, it's a composite type because it contains you know, not single entities like uh, numbers, like a number for example is a non-composite type, atomic type I think it's called, <coughs> whereas tuple is a collection of various things. So tuple is a composite type and it can be used as arguments to functions. So you can pass tuples to functions and functions can also return tuples, which we saw earlier when we did the, when we saw the uh, partition uh, in the string. In, um, partition is a uh, method which accepts some character or a string as uh, input uh, as an argument and it gives you back a tuple. So uh, tuples can be returned by functions and ca functions can also take tuples as arguments. <coughs> uh, one important point to note is that uh, if you if there is a tuple with only one element, you need to end it with a comma just to make sure that it is different from a string. So this is how you uh, mention, show that it is a tuple, with, you end it with a comma. And uh, this is how that tuple looks like. This is how Python prints it out, it, it prints it in brackets. <coughs> This is an empty tuple. So in general, tuples are faster than lists because they are non-mutable. So in some situations, you might actually want to use a tuple for improved performance because uh, lists contain more o overhead. The Python has to keep track of uh, indices. It has to allocate more memory when the list changes and all that. So, so since tuples are tuples do not have any of those problems, tuples are non-mutable and so they are in general little f more faster than uh, lists. So commonly tuples are used with uh, dictionaries which is another type of data structure which we will see shortly. So again this is an example. What is this? This is a, this is a, this is a list which contains various things in the list. The first element of the list is a, a string. The second element is a tuple. The third element of the list is a list. It's a list of strings. Okay, so nested of uh, two will give me back a list of strings. Let us see what is a dictionary. We saw a dictionary in the previous slide and that was used commonly with tuples. So dictionaries are like lists in some sense, except that the index is a is an any non-mutable type. In lists, for example, the indices are always integers. You know, you start at zero and go on up to uh, some n minus 1 where n is the length of the list so you have to use numbers whereas uh, in dictionary you need not have to use numbers you can you can use any non mutable type so it is it is like an associative uh, memory it stores the uh, items as key value pairs where key is the index and value is the value stored at that particular index uh, so if you have studied this earlier, it is similar. This is also called associative arrays or it is also sometimes called a hash table. So dictionaries are again an example of structures which are mutable, which can be modified. So this is how you define a dictionary in Python. So I'm defining, let's say, a telephone directory, which I've defined it like a, as a dictionary. Uh, these are the entries. Jack is 4098. SAPE is 4139. So it's like a telephone directory. So Jack is the name and 4098 is Jack's telephone number. So uh, so if you want to, so this is uh, the uh, beginning, uh, beginning dictionary. Uh, note that you create a dictionary using curly braces. 
This is how you define a dictionary. And then I'm adding a new element because dictionaries are mutable. The dictionaries can change. I'm adding a new element. So you can see how I add it. Uh, because once I've already defined tell to be a dictionary, I can act access it similar to how I access a list except that the index is now what what is the key so I have now added uh, Guido and the number is 4127 and type uh, function tells me that tell is a dictionary and if I print it it looks like this so these are the key value pairs Jack 4098 is the first key value pair say 4139 second and Guido 4127 which we added just now is the third and to access a particular element is just how you uh, just like how you did the ins insert you use the key as the index just like how you do it in an, in a list so tell of jack will give you the value stored against jack 4098 here you can delete elements uh, i've added another element here so this is how my dictionary looks like I can convert the dictionary into a list so it gives me a new list and uh, okay note that here only the uh, so let's see what is it there here let me see list I think I had yeah see the dictionary type what is it called list yeah, so, uh, the list function returns a list of all the keys in the dictionary. Okay, so that is why I'm getting just the keys. These are the keys. Uh, sorted is a method by which I can sort the dictionaries in, in place. It gives me a list of uh, dictionary. Uh, it gives me the list of the keys in uh, sorted order. Mm, must be there here. Maybe sorted is a, I think, a more generic method which applies to many types. So that is why its documentation is not there here. You will have to search for in the uh, object which is higher than this. Mm. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. Then there is the in operator which you, which will tell you. Uh, whether it is a whether it is uh, whether this particular element is present in the dictionary similar to how you have used it in a list and you can also use not in fine <coughs> now uh, what happens if you uh, have a dictionary and if you give a key which is not there okay so for example this is my dictionary now and I look for, I try to retrieve something called anu, which is not there in this dictionary. So in that case, Python will raise an exception, write an, write an error. And it's this type of error is known as a key error, which tells you that this key is not present. And there are some other methods, keys and values. Uh, Tell.keys, it gives you a, a, a view. This is called a view. And tell.values will also give you the, uh, this also gives you a view. So basically a view is like a snapshot. So uh, when the dictionary changes, the view also changes. Okay, so that is why it's called a view. So it's a dynamic type and uh, because in many times you might need to get all the keys in a particular dictionary to search for a particular value or to check, uh, check if a particular entry is there as the key. Um, then you can use this method and when the dictionary gets updated, with another key then the view will also get updated uh, tell out items items method will give you the key value pairs itself for all the uh, items in the dictionary uh, another uh, useful method is get so dictionary dot get and this object this method accepts the key which you want to search for and it also tells you what it also ac accepts an argument which will be printed out if the key is not found okay so rather than throwing an exception so it basically it internally handles this key error and gives you this message so in in in, in many situations this may be more useful 
we'll see an example of this in a minute uh, also remember that we cannot have uh, uh, multiple items with the same key keys have to be made of immutable objects uh, whereas the values need not be unique okay the key the key has to be un uh, unique and it non mutable whereas the values could be types like strings or lists so they can be immutable or non non mutable now uh, one uh, one way in which uh, which is which you see commonly in python to initiate or create a dictionary or a list is by using this comprehension method so this technique is called uh, uh, here in the case of a dictionary it's called dictionary comprehension or for a list it's called a, it's called a list comprehension so you can see how the dictionary is formed here x such that x star star 2 that is uh, x power of 2 for x in 246 so what this will do is it will create uh, key value pairs in this particular way so x x is the key uh, star, x squared is the uh, value so 2, 4, 4, 16, 636. So this is an example of dictionary comprehension. How you can quickly create a dictionary. Uh, similarly, you can create a uh, list comprehension also because list does not have key value pair; it has only a value. So here in in this case, uh, for x in range 10, x star star 2 will uh, store the squares of. We'll have a list which has the squares from uh, numbers from 0 to 9. And that is what this does. So that was the list comprehension and the dict comprehension. We will see an example of a dictionary uh, which by which we can use a, a sparse matrix. So, so in many uh, applications in single processing and in data analysis, uh, the objects which we are dealing with are uh, big, but it could be very sparsely populated. One such example is a sparse matrix. So this is an example of a sparse matrix. Most of the entries of the matrix of this particular matrix are zero. There are only a few non-zero entries. So that is why it is a sparse matrix. So now in uh, Python, uh, we've not uh, looked at multidimensional arrays. For example, we will do we will do that when we study NumPy, which gives you numerical, uh, which gives you routines to handle uh, matrices and other numerical objects. Uh, but currently we have seen only lists so one way to represent a matrix in python is by using a list of lists like this so uh, so this matrix is written as a list of lists where each element of the list itself is a list and um, and to access a particular element uh, you can you need to access it with the uh, notation which we are which we saw it earlier with the list so 0 2 so here the, you, you mean you're going to access the uh, the first list this the third element of the first list that's what this means okay so this is how you access it remember that we are putting it as 0 in brackets and 2 in brackets okay now the problem is that uh, storing a matrix a sparse matrix especially if the matrix is very large most of it is going to be zero so we are wasting a lot of memory because each of these locations can store a integer value or whatever value is the type of this matrix whatever type is that so you, so you can have a matrix of integers or a matrix of floats or matrix of strings or whatever you want so uh, so based on whatever data type it is uh, it could it could result in a wastage of a lot of memory so we would like to minimize uh, the amount of memory which we have used keeping track of the fact that most of the elements in the matrix are zero so in essence we need to only keep track of the non-zero entries and where they are and whatever is not there we will just return it, it as zero so that is a good use of a dictionary for example to, to this matrix I will store in a dictionary like this what I will do, uh, I will now the key of the dictionary will be the location in the uh, matrix where that non-zero value is. So this is the dictionary which contains only the non-zero values. 
so uh, 0 3 is the key and it stores the value 1 so 0 3 is nothing but this particular element the next element in the dictionary is, is the key is 2 1 because this is 2 1 uh, second row 0 1 2 first uh, column and the value stored is 2 and similarly 4 3 uh, fourth row uh, fifth row and uh, fourth column is 3 so this is the these are the three key value pairs stored in the dictionary which represents the non-zero elements and uh, <coughs> how do I access it now just like because now the uh, key values are tuples here what I will do is I will uh, access it just like how I am accessing a dictionary uh, with the key being a particular tuple which basically is the ij value of that non-zero entry now this is how you get the non-zero entries how do we get the zero entry for that we can use the get method using this get method you give this additional argument as zero so that means if this key is not found it will return zero so zero three is present so it gave me one matrix dot get one three which is actually zero and it is not there in this dictionary will actually throw a key error and it will handle the key error and it will and it will return me a zero so by using this i can save the uh, the whole sparse matrix as a dictionary which contains only the non-zero elements and i use the get method to retrieve the elements so if the key is present and so if the uh, key uh, if the uh, uh, if the element in the ij location you are looking at is a non-zero entry it will be there in the dictionary and it will be fetched from the dictionary and if the element in that particular ij location is a non is a zero element then it will not be stored in the dictionary and the get method will return me a zero fine so this is one thing which you uh, which is a nice ac nice application of a dictionary this is a practical application of a dictionary so uh, more sophisticated uh, data structures like numpy arrays once we come to numpy use more sophisticated methods to handle sparse matrices but this is one way of uh, implementing a sparse matrix fine so let us go ahead okay this is uh, this is an example of uh, uh, a subclass i've been talking about classes and subclasses right so counter counter is a type of dictionary it's a subclass of dictionary means it is derived from dictionary so it has all the features of dictionary and some additional functionality uh, so you can go through this example and see what it is doing okay it can be used to basically used to count uh, count how many times a particular uh, element occurs okay so you can take this up as a homework and go through this code and see what it is doing I will now talk about uh, stacks and queues which are uh, useful data structures in a variety of applications and it is uh, nice for you to implement some of them I have asked this in the coming assignment so so stacks and queues are dynamic data structures so in a list for example there is no control on how you can access elements you can access any element in the list you can access something in the middle you can access something in the front something in the back wherever you want you can directly access and modify elements in a list whereas in a stack a stack is a particular type of data structure which kind of controls how you can access elements into the how you can access elements which have been which have been put into the stack so stack in particular uh, stack queues stack enforces this last in first out uh, uh, paradigm so that means whatever uh, is there uh, last that is the one which is going to come out first and the other uh, data structure is the queue which is does the uh, the first in first out that is whatever goes in first has to be processed first so this is a schematic diagram of a stack so you can uh, a stack is usually shown like this so currently the stack is empty because the stack is just created then there are two operations in a stack push and pop so push means you're pushing an element into the stack so now the stack contains this item a and there is a particular variable known as the top of the stack which tells you what is the topmost element in the stack then you push b so because of the structure of the stack 
B is on top of A. Okay, so now the top gets updated. So B becomes the new top. Then uh, the second operation is pop. So when I do pop, whatever is that there on the top that gets that comes out first. So B is returned, and A becomes the new top. So and when you pop once again, A also comes out and stack the stack becomes empty. So you can see that you first process A, then you process B. But the when you retrieved items from the stack, it came in the reverse order. Whatever was pushed into the stack the last came out first. So B came out first and then followed by A. So this is how a stack enforces uh, last in first out. Okay. So there are various applications. One simple ex ap application is the undo functionality in your text editor. Whenever you do something, you, you can always undo it. And that is done by keeping track of your operations in a stack. <coughs> so in in python uh, there are multiple ways to implement stacks the simplest way to do it is by using the list itself uh, the simple list provides uh, methods which can uh, approximate the uh, functionality of a stack sorry about that noise here uh, yeah there's some construction going on here anyway so uh, list provide uh, append and pop method append is basically similar to your push and pop is the pop okay so let's create a list which is empty here list dot append hello list dot append world list dot append fortune so now the list now contains hello world fortune because we kept on appending appending means add to the end so we've seen this method earlier then you do pop so then whatever was appended to the end comes out that is how this is a built-in functionality which is there in list so now the list now becomes hello in world the uh, fortune is popped out and this is returned as a string uh, one more pop will uh, give me back world and list will now contain only hello so by using uh, append and pop you can simulate a stack using a list another data structure is that of a queue so um, the queue is like how it suggests it is first in first out so a queue is a little more complicated than a stack but a queue also you can implement it using a list but it is probably not very efficient uh, for a reason which you see in a minute so a queue has two variables front and the rear entry is from the rear and exit is from the front so this is similar to the queue which you see in a bus stop so currently so initially the queue is empty then I enqueue A, so A is put here into the first element of the uh, of this queue. Then I enqueue B, then I enqueue C, then I use DQ. DQ is the second operation. Enqueue and DQ are the two operations in a queue. So enqueue will return whatever is the is at the front of the queue. So this is the front now. So A is returned, and now B becomes the new front. So there is a implementational detail here for example now a is returned a is removed from here um, so now you b and c are here so you can think that one two three locations of the queue are actually empty but it's actually not three there is actually four because a is not there now so ideally what should happen is periodically you must push uh, and fill up the um, empty spaces in the front of the queue so that is why uh, using a standard list is not very efficient to implement a queue Okay, so this is how the NQ and DQ works and uh, you need to remove uh, removal from the front requires movement of data to be filled up to use up the space uh, which is created. So rather than using a list like how we did for a stack, uh, Python provides a separate object or a separate class which is known as uh, a DEC, D-E-Q-U-E, which is called a DEC. It's pronounced as DEC. It's in the collections package. And actually, this is a generalization of both stacks and queues. And it provides a lot of functionality. You can see the documentation here. And uh, it can, like I said, it can be used as ba both as a stack as well as a queue. So based on what is the operation which you want. So this is how decks can be used as queues. So I've created a new deck, which I put called it as queue. And um, I use append operations to insert elements into the queue. And there's an operation called pop left. 
pop left is one which basically is uh, popping from the left is essentially uh, popping from the left means you are removing from the front of the cube this is the left right so it's removing from the front of the cube so uh, a deck can be used as a cube you can see the documentation there's also a pop method which uh, makes it you work like a stack okay so this is a more of a generalization of stacks and queues so based on what is it how based on what kind of behavior you want you can call the appropriate functions fine so uh, that covers the lecture part i hope you will have time to see it and then uh, we will do the assignment which is essentially based on this lecture okay i will cover that in a i will explain that assignment in a separate video thank you